Last week, the health minister uh, went into a wacko rant accusing parents who take their kids on a road trip of, ro of locking them up in a car for 10 days straight without a washroom break, causing the whole world to burn. Unbelievable. All because we proposed that the government take taxes off gas so that Canadians could have a summer break. Will this health minister break into the same hysteria over his boss's use of a gas-guzzling private jet to vacation all around the world. Mr. Speaker, uh, we face an existential crisis in climate change. The Conservative solution, uh, you'd have to drive, I was wrong, and I admit it, it wasn't 37,000 kilometres, it was 44,000 kilometres to get the benefit that they're talking about. And what they want to do is cut not only dental care, not only cut child care, not only cut pharma care, but end our climate action and return to the days when the Conservative Party would go into climate conferences and attack the action the world was taking to save our planet. I will stand for climate change and so will this party. Party, Mr. Speaker. His wacko math gets even worse. He's talking about vacations of 44,000 kilometers. Those are the vacations his, his boss takes in a taxpayer-funded, fuel-guzzling private jet. The vacations for which Conservatives want to give Canadians a break is to a local campground where they can support the local economy. We know Canadians can't go abroad. All they can do is get in their small vehicle and have a small break. Why won't the government take the tax off so that they can afford to do that? Uh, Mr. Speaker, it seems that we have, in fact, underestimated the wacko math of the Conservative Party of Canada. According to Sarah Hastings simon an associate professor at the University of Calgary of Faculty of Science, and she crunched the numbers the, the alleged numbers of the Conservative Party based on the, the savings, and her her calculation, someone would have to drive 44,000 kilometers, not 37,000 kilometers, Mr. Speaker, 44, so you could, in fact, drive from the North Pole to the South Pole and back, and you would have some kilometers left. These are the type of mathematics that these people are doing, Mr. Speaker. If that particular minister had his way, Canadians wouldn't even be allowed to drive to the grocery store because he wants to abolish roads. He says we should not fund any more roads and then has the audacity to call other people wacko. Most Canadians don't want to put on an orange jumpsuit or climb a building. They just want to take their kids for a merciful break from this miserable, broken economy. So will the government accept our common sense plan to take the tax off gas and diesel so Canadians can have a summer? You can't, in fact, drive from the, the North Pole to the South Pole. There are no roads. I'm sure they'll find ways to blame me for that. Leave alone the fact that there are two oceans. But if you were to drive from Canada's most northern city, accessible by road, Tuk Tuk Tuk, in the Northwest Territories, and then you drove to the most southern city, accessible by, by road, Tierra, Tierra del Fuego, in Argentina, you would have to drive 16,000 kilometers at an average speed of 100 kilometers an hour without stopping. 